learn about it. From the other side. Now presenting. Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. motorcycle fan. Uh, I have had my own motorcycles, but they have to be really short because I'm short. And if I if I have to be on my tiptoes <laughs> at a stop, I lay it down. Lay it down. But we are talking about how um, how in how much safer it is to ride motorcycles on a track. And we have here mm-hmm. something called Ride Smart that will take a brand new person, never been on a bike before. And we'll slowly get them into racing, a novice, intermediate expert, et cetera. And it's so much safer. Mm-hmm. My, my mm-hmm. husband has a suit that when he almost crashes, it blows up like like an airbag, basically. And the only time mm-hmm. he's ever gotten hurt mm-hmm. is when he was just trying out stuff in regular gear and no helmet, which is an idiot. Anyway, yeah, um, but, that. yeah, you can just slide around like a hockey puck. But if uh, puck, puck. but if you are, you know, driving on the freeway, et cetera, I mean, one of the best racer friends of his, you know, it, there was a, 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 a four by four in in uh, in the exit uh, lane for a highway. Boom, and he died, even though he just mm-hmm. you know had all the stuff on. So I really recommend that nobody rides on the road. You have to deal with other people, whereas racers, they go the same direction as you do, around and around, clockwise or counterclockwise. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we are not here to talk about this. I'm sorry. I'm just, you know, I want my, my husband to be happy I want Rob to be talking about him. motorcycles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, but no, we are here to talk about our wonderful guest, D.P. Thompson. She has got a new amazing book. Where does Lulu go? And it's just a uh, just a just a perfect book for children, for all children to read. And of course, we have Michelle Gray from the HealingH-Art.com. So of course, we all love. And uh, so, yeah, mm-hmm. D.P. Thompson, take it away. Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hello, everybody. Um, nice to be back. Thank you so much for having me. I feel so honored to be back here again. Um, it's great to hear your voice, Mama Bear, and, you know, Thank Michelle, you. you're just unbelievably awesome. And, uh, oh, and Eric, you. let's not forget the main, yes. main star. <laughs> Sorry? He, ain't gonna let, he is not going to let you forget. No, no. <laughs> no, no, the main man, the main man of the show is uh, Eric, Archangel Eric, and, uh, you know, sending lots of love out to him, and because of him, all of this is happening, and and yeah. uh, Michelle, of course, and Mama Bear, of course, so, yeah, we cannot uh, not say hello to Eric, because <laughs> he's he says, he says hello, he's, he's cutting in and saying hello, hello, and he's like, I love you, he says, I love you, Mom. Love you, Dee. I love you. I love you. I love you so much. Yes. We have to get our, our love yous back and forth now and get that out of the way because it's so important, you know, um, to always acknowledge Eric right from the start and he'll pop in and out, I'm sure. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, yeah it, is, it is really, really great to be here. Um uh, for those listening, it's about children today. Um, that's what the book was designed for. And mm. also for parents uh, a little bit, you know, and um, child-parent communication just to make it a little bit better. So uh, you might want to go and get a pen and paper because I might just say something or we might say something today that, you know, the penny drops and goes, oh, that's why my child is doing that, or that's what she meant, or, you know. So uh, any way to take notes idea. would be, I, I, I think, would be uh, a good idea. I don't know where mm-hmm. I'm getting that from, but I think it's being downloaded to me. So I'm just the messenger saying, get a pen and paper. <laughs> I'm and, uh, yeah. to do that. 
First of all, write yeah. down the okay, name so... of the title of the book. Where does Lulu go? Is that available on Amazon, I guess? Yes, it is. Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Freezing Press. Great. Uh, dot com. Yes, right. yes it is. Okay, the hardcover, us... softcover ebook. Yeah. Tell, tell so us how this I thought, book evolved. Um, Where did you, how did you think about writing this? I mean, just tell us from the beginning your journey to the publication of that book. Wow. Okay. So as I was like most um, angels, they they go through some very terrible ordeals, and I was yeah. in a very lost, 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 dark place. And long story short, and um, I just all of a sudden it just went boom. It just popped into my head, and all I heard was, "I'm going to write a book," and I thought. I'm out of my mind now. I'm losing my mind. This is ridiculous. You know, I've never taken a writing course or anything. No, no, no. You're going to write a book and you're going to write it for children and it's going to help them because think of your childhood, how, how, you know, you could have used something like this and uh, all this was coming to me, just coming to me and coming to me. So I, I typed not too fast, not too slow. I typed like 60 words a minute or so. And once I, I was told the character's name is Lulu, uh, don't ask me. It's a knowing. I didn't really hear a voice, but I kind of did, but I didn't. I, I don't know how to explain it. And mm-hmm. I was told even I'm not allowed to spell it L, capital L-U-L-U. It has to be capital L-U, capital L-U. I was even told wow. how I had to spell it. Yes. And, um, and she's going to be seven years old. Okay. So we just. I just took it off from there. So next thing I know, I've got uh, Word 365 in front of me and the computer, like the laptop, and I'm just, I could not type fast enough. It was just coming to me. And with it just, before I knew it, 10 chapters were done. I was on to the sequel, five chapters, and I just had this, um, I just had to put this, uh, I, I don't know how to explain it. I had to stop myself, and it was really hard. Um, I had to stop it because I said to myself, I've got to get the first book out. What am I doing? You know? Yeah. So yeah, five chapters of the sequel just came pouring out of me and the sequel is off the rails, but we won't go there yet. Amazing. We'll talk about bridge one first, which is book one. And um, yeah. So, and then I didn't know where any of this was coming from, but there was, it was such a, a good feeling because I knew that I was going to be helpful to the world, yes. to others, especially our, our little people, you know? And yeah. so I thought, this is, this is just great. And it was just such an amazing feeling. So I didn't question it. I just <laughs> kept on going. And, and before I knew it, I said, oh, my God, I've got a 10-chapter book right here. And uh, I think wow. it was two months I wrote it. Yeah, just two months, and boom, it was there. Oh, Good two Lord. months. No, that was there, plus the five, five chapters of the sequel. So it went really, really fast, and it just kept being downloaded. And then I, it never occurred to me that Eric might be involved. And suddenly, ah. you know, I'm around the seventh chapter. and No, I was at the sixth chapter, sorry. And Eric started coming in. And I thought, oh, my oh. God, really? So I, I thought, okay, I better email Elisa and, and ask her if this is okay. <laughs> You know, of course it is. And, I said, and I, I, yeah, but you never know, you know, and you just want to, you want to ask, you know, this is a sensitive yeah, situation, and I wanted to be respectful. And had it been something that would have upset you, I would have said, Eric, sorry, you got to wait, man, or you got to go somewhere else. But um, uh, Elisa well, said, yeah, that. sure, put him in there. He, he, yeah, he wants in there, put him in there. So he <laughs> took over. He just took over. It was really Uh-oh. something. And so, you know, we've got Eric the teacher in there. And then he's, because it is a teaching book, and yeah. I've got teacher in my soul. And, um, yeah, so it's just. Typical it's, it's, it's so, it's just. Uh, uh, pardon me? Typical of an Sorry? earth angel. It's very typical oh, of an oh, okay. angel to be a teacher. Yeah. Wait, can, oh, okay. can, can we pause? Right. And I want to ask you. 
I want to ask Eric something. Eric, who channeled this book to her? And of course, it's more, it can be more than one person. Any famous authors? I mean, oh, one of her relatives. Wow, um, good question. Yeah, um, Eric says um, some of it's coming. Well, it is coming through her higher self. Um, so a lot of it is coming through the higher self. And there's also, um, there's a, a hmm, I think I can say this right. Um, there's an uh, Egyptian, um, <laughs> T-H-O-T-H. Um, yes. Yes. Oh, oh my God, that sense. would make sense. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> That's wow. right oh my god oh my it god is, that's like, huge michelle and i were just talking about i i just said to you i feel this huge huge egyptian connection and i know that i'm some sort of queen mm-hmm. yeah i just said that to michelle about 15 minutes mm-hmm. ago mm-hmm. oh my oh, god oh mm-hmm. my wow okay that's pretty cool. okay and what Eric yes. says is, is that, that um, he says there's a connection, like you have a, a soul connection there, like another fractal of you, another lifetime. And what he's saying is that um, that energy, so thought or toast, um, it, it invites to write and inspire. And so, um, so he says a mixture of your higher self and Eric says, and me, and me. Oh, oh yes, of course. Oh, yes, <laughs> you know. But but can I just ask? Is I'm seeing like um have I got the wrong face or type of head, Michelle? I'm getting bird, bird head. Yes, yes, yes. That is that is what I see. Yes. Okay, so he showed himself to me a few times. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt that. Yes. I yes. I, and, okay. Eric, and Eric says yes because you you are connected to him. He says that. Um, you, you've worked with him, like um, uh, he's saying, like teachings. Um, he says uh, learning and teaching with him is what you've been with, with Eric, oh, with Eric, or with thought, with thought, thought, yeah. with thought. Oh, okay. Yes. Got so it. is is that him, Michelle, in the picture that I have, the beak, the uh, the big eyes and the beak, the the bird beak. Um, and and there's a a being floating in front, going Hang across on. the sky. Hang on, let me ask Eric. Yes, yeah. says yes. That's, wow, that's him. That's what I saw. Oh, yeah. Elisa, I gotta send this to you. You you can see his eyes so clearly. He looks so serious. Oh my oh God, my he looks God. so serious. This anyway, it's amazing. Yes, I, mean, I know. I know. Oh, oh. It, um, and uh, it's amazing the, the images. It's the bird, uh, you know, beak, and all that stuff. That's so cool. Well, yes, I'll read yes. That later. Well, well, get yes. So anyway, <laughs> um, that's mind blowing, and I'm in shock. So I'm going to try and keep um, a head on my shoulders. And that <laughs> being said, if I if I can just say something um, about you know the different types of children. So we've got our indigos, right? If I if I may uh, go into this, and yes, please. So any parent out there, okay. So the, any parent out there that is um, wondering about their child's behavior, um, the the teachers might be complaining, school might be a problem, uh, doctors are saying ADD, ADHD, and all that stuff. So you could have an indigo child. And they're very empathic, extremely curious, and they're very strong-willed. So if that is kind of like your child, you could possibly help yourself and your child by uh, looking up more information on indigo children. And the the reason why they they came in in 1978 to the Earth and... um, they have an indigo, which is blue, violet, violet, blue mix. It's gorgeous. Right. Um, frequency, right. oh, which, yeah. is, which our frequencies are our auras. So it was scientifically proven that, you know, j- nearly every kid that they uh, did a test on with the ADD and ADHD, they, they had this 
indigo blue uh, aura that they use with those special cameras that that can photograph all. Oh yes, brilliant. And that's their. Oh, so that. Yes, yeah. that's right. Right. Yes. Right. And that's their frequencies. So that's and to get your head around how these different children are, and if it's a little bit too far fetched for you, and it's the first time you're hearing this, just think of a horoscope. So you come in with your horoscope, your horoscope sign. You just you come right. in with a frequency as well, and and that's. That's how to pretty much get your um, your head around it. They're they're quite psychic, and apparently they're born awake. So well, what's interesting um, about the whole third eye? Eyes. Well, what's interesting about people coming in with higher frequencies? This is very typical of Earth angels. They have to come in with a much higher frequency than normal because they put so much crap on their plate. So that they can learn and become better light workers. Yep. You know. So yeah. So that makes sense. Oh. Yes, I feel like I've lived uh, twenty lifetimes already. Uh, yeah. So their third eye is really, really open, and um, and that's what I have to say about maybe indigo children. So I'm hoping that you know that's just t- tip of the iceberg there. So um, I hope that some oh, helps for what, what um, some parents. What, what type of uh, what type of child is this book most meant for? Are you saying it's meant mostly for indigos? No, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not there yet. All no. right. Um, basically, but yeah. So I was going to go over to the, it's for all children, by the way, but I was going to go over to the crystal. I think they were next, but Michelle, you can, um, Correct me if I'm wrong ever, because, you know, don't take mm-hmm. my word for it. Um, so they're usually late talkers, and they develop things later than the average. So parents seem to be a little bit concerned when they have a child that, you know, is of a certain age, and they figure they should be walking by now, or they should be talking by now. Um, that is a sign uh, by um, obviously it could be anything, but it's a sign for crystal children. Very, very common Eric, among crystal Eric, children. Eric, what were you? Eric, I'm sorry to interrupt. What kind of child were you? Indigo, rainbow, okay. crystal, something else? Um, Eric says, he, Eric says, you know, there are some kids that have a mixture because Eric says he's a bit of a mixture between an indigo and a crystal child. He no, said, I'm talking about uh, Eric. Eric, Eric in particular, yeah, what were yeah. you, Eric? Yeah, er, that's Eric what I got. A, he, Eric said he was a mixture. He wasn't. Oh, he wasn't just one. Um, he he had indigo and crystal. Yes, yeah, I was going to get there. Long time, <laughs> he took a long time to talk and develop, and we thought it was because he had older siblings that anticipated his needs. So that's quite interesting. All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. He said. He said, um, Eric is just saying that part of that, and he's actually saying that um, because he's pointing out my son, um, because he says that my son, Marcus, is very much like a crystal child as well. And he says that there's a lot of um, uh, frequency, like a lot of frequency that's up in the head, up in the crown area. And so what he's saying is that there's – a lot of the energy is up there and not in the throat or the need to express. There's a lot oh. going on in the top. He says that um, uh, very dominant in the crown chakra, like very dominant in the upper chakras. And so he says yeah. that affects the speaking. Well, that makes sense because they're incredibly sensitive okay. um, because they have the ability to feel universal consciousness. Yes. Whoa! So, yes, That's yeah, they're amazing. very, they're, yeah, way up there, and um, so they they're huggers. They they'll just go up to anybody. They'll hug and hug and hug everything, every animal, because everything's one to them still at a very young age. Oh, how sweet! That so if sense. you notice, yeah, and I think they came in around the eighties to two thousand was quite heavy. Um, yeah, for them, everything is 
connected. So, yeah, that was, and it's so funny, uh, Elisa, that you asked that about Eric, because as soon as you asked it, I got mixed. That's all I heard was mixed. That's mm-hmm. cool. And, and then Michelle said mixed. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. well, it's Eric we're talking about. He has to be mixed. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> definitely. Oh, my goodness. And then next we have our rainbow children. Yes. So the rainbow children, they've got like a really strong willpower. And uh, it's their first incarnation. So they have no karma to deal with. What? Mm, oh, yeah, wow. That's, that's, yeah, rainbow children. So Elisa, I think you have a granddaughter that has um, come straight off of source. That's right, Arlene. So she's a rainbow. Yeah, that's cool. That's okay. right. Yeah, she, they come straight off the source. They've got it's their very first incarnation. Um, and, yeah, so they're usually born into fully functioning families uh, that have less drama than the average or, you know, not, not something too, too bad. Um, okay. So that they can focus on their tasks unhindered, you know. Um, and what, uh, they're what totally, is their purpose? What are the, they their purpose? Do? Yes. Oh, I'm getting there. I know the Ithnikos <laughs> you are, must, are you must be... break down the old, right? Break down the old crap. And the other rainbow, Chris, I don't know, yeah, is that's to right. helping rebuild it or something? Well, you, that's three times now, Elisa, that you're just one step ahead of me. So you must be channeling something. Um, yeah, I so I was about to say, um, so, so, <laughs> so anyways, um, they're usually born into, you know, less drama, uh, so they can focus on their tasks and, um, they're in total alignment with spirit. So they're extremely psychic and they wow. are here to raise the vibration in a very 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 big way and they vibrate higher than anyone wow their vibration their vibration is higher higher than any the rainbow yes Mm. so um what also another reason why getting back to your question of why i wanted to write this book um it wasn't so much i was just told to write the book but then it was like well, inside of me, I was feeling very strongly, what would I have wanted when I was very young? I'm talking oh. before the age of seven, you know, when all those years and around seven and eight when things got really, really tough for me. And mm-hmm. I was always alone. I was adopted into a family that basically didn't want me. And oh. I was just always, always alone. And I have um, sense. I would sense spirit. I would sense being. And I was afraid. I was very afraid. I had nobody to talk to about it. Um, Yeah. And then we had to bury my cat into the rose garden. And and when she died and I couldn't handle that, um, my sensitivity level is through the roof. So um, as as a child, it was really, really hard. So the the tears, it just, I, I, I really would have, just loved a friend or loved to not be sitting in the corner shaking every time they turned up the lights and it was time to go to sleep and I was up all night. Um, oh. You know, I was just so afraid of everything. And yeah. um, I would have loved a book of explanation, at least, if they would have just gave me a book, you know. So I know that I'm not the only child that's going to go through this or has gone through it or is going through this and feeling all yeah. these different beings and realms right? There's no explanation for anything. So in this book, what I want to do, number one, first and foremost, is take away fear. So children being afraid of bedtime, or even if it's not so much fear, some of them are still uncomfortable. And the parents are like, oh, well, just let them sleep in my bed for tonight, you know, and our bed for tonight, and they'll grow out of it. Or, you know, and, but there's more right. to it than that. And, and yeah. so I want bedtime to be, you know, uh, something to look forward to, not to say, oh, no, can I stay up another five minutes, another five minutes. Um, and it's, it's not to be, like, I found it strange. I thought it was the weirdest thing. And I still find it a bit strange that humans sleep. So, 
You yeah. know, whenever I'm I need a, ba- a baby sleeping. I love sleeping. Oh, me too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. When, I was younger, I when I was younger, I, I did it maybe at one point, but, but I can, like, um, Dee, when, you, when you're talking, like, I remember being on my hands and knees and crawling from my bedroom into my parents' bedroom because I didn't want them to know that I was crawling in there. I was so terrified and didn't want them to send me back to my room. Oh. And I would see shadows moving back and forth, and I would see oh, them yeah. standing in front of my closet, and I was terrified. Yeah, closet, closet. Yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. it's not nice, and because most of the time they just want to be there for you. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, and, it, and it could be something we contrasted before we even – incarnated you know so mm-hmm. right. it's just it's just nice i think at a young age to start start at a young age and take away the fear start taking yeah. away the fear of the unknown the right. fear of feeling right. other beings or seeing other beings or being in other realms and that is what this book does so there's the fear which helps with the on to anxiety so at the beginning yeah. of each chapter there's bre- breathing exercises and it's oh. proper breathing, breathing from the diaphragm, it, not, not from your chest. So when the children are lying down in the bed, they're learning this, this kind of breathing. And Lulu starts every chapter breathing from 10, and she counts backwards, and she's running to the grass. And it just, you know, they get their unicorns, and they go off, and they have a really good time. So the breathing exercises is very calming. So I wanted something that could be, you know, helpful in that way as well, because I can remember hyperventilating, you know, and oh, from God. being so scared. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. oh, the, the closet is the worst for me. So, yeah. and the oh. basement. The closet in the basement, I think, Michelle, you and I have that in common. Yeah. So, I was terrified childhood. of somebody grabbing my ankles as I was running up the stairs. Oh, me too. Oh, my God. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the worst thing wow. is I would never go upstairs that were hollow. Yeah. You know, like the back yeah. the back wasn't yeah. on them. Oh yeah. my god. Yes. And yeah. that scared the living daylights out of me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. um oh, so wow. anyways, that's another thing the book does. So it's just uh calming because you know, um until the age of seven, all the children are highly connected to everything else. Other realms, yes. source energy, uh, spirits, uh, the spirit world, and you know, so things happen, and um, they just they they just um, they say things to their parents, and parents are blowing it off. So oh. this is you For know, example, the, you I give heard an some. Sol- give an yes, I can. Um, Okay. Yeah, oh, sure, because the, the book does it. It's all throughout the book. Uh, Lulu's mother is totally oblivious. You know, she wakes up every morning, and she, she remembers her astral traveling, and she starts telling her mom about it, and her mother's got a time management problem, so she's always late. So she's rush, always rushling, uh, rustling through uh, Lulu's drawers to get her clothes, to get her dressed for school, and Lulu's in another world still, and she's going, I was at the animal park, and I saw Mrs. Tutu, you your cat mummy and da, 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 da. and she's oh. like that's nice dear you have to hurry up we're gonna be late you know that's nice dear put this on and yes I love I love to remember my cat and, and that's nice of you to remember her dear let's go now you know and um and but Lulu was there she was with the cat wow. and literally because she asked for travel and she remembered it and so yeah. yeah because you know I think on the last radio show I said you know um, parents, please, if if your child says I'm having tea with grandma, you know, and grandma died 30 years before the child's born. Oh, yeah. You right, know, right. Or whatever. Yeah, you know, please believe the child and encourage the child. Because you can ask yeah. the child what's grandma wearing and you're going to get some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, some confirmation there. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. and and you you can learn. You can really learn from children. Uh, it's incredible, the children that are here now. Um, you can really, really, really learn from them. So it does also teach in the book about the astral travel. Oh, was that a good enough example, Elisa, or should I give another? Oh no, whatever you want. 
Oh, okay, so it's just, yeah, just um, if they say something like I have an imaginary friend or I have a friend, uh, don't think it's which, their, which just their imagination. Did, or sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah, one of my kids yeah. did. Riri yeah. Coslin. Riri Coslin was the name of Michelle's uh, imaginary friend. Cool. And we let her have it. Oh, like, that's so awesome. Cute. You, want to, you want to invite Riri to, to dinner? You know, and I think you have to do that because the, this Riri Coslin, it ended up being one of her guides. So you never know. Or it could be yeah. like Jesse, somebody they met on actual traveling, traveling to another dimension, et cetera. There's so many possibilities. So exactly, true. exactly. And, you know, if they say they're seeing somebody or they're seeing an animal or something like that, you know, it's, it's nice to encourage them because, you know, uh, first of all, it's great communication between parent and child. And the parent yeah. will learn because, you know, the parent's not at that level anymore. It's taken away after age seven or eight depending on the person. So, you know, you you get a good connection there and you can really learn a lot. And it's nice, it's fun, and it's a better understanding of your child to just not blow off the stage. You know, children will draw their, their playmates uh, that they see. Yeah. And some yeah. parents will just say, oh, what an imagination you've got. But it's not imagination. And this book is not imagination at all either. So... Um, yeah, she's not dreaming. The mother thinks she's in about her dreams, but she's talking about her astral traveling because Lulu is born with this gift that she can remember everything. And she's shocked that nobody else remembers. And, uh, yeah, she does. Yeah. Take, she takes you each chapter to a different mystical, magical world and other realms. And, um, and then there's lessons to be learned in the book as well. It's also, it's not just a self-help book, it's a teaching book. Yeah, yeah, so, um, you know, that we don't die, only our bodies do. So, I, you know, when I had to put my cat into the rose garden, I, again, I was so devastated, I couldn't understand. Nobody bothered to really teach it to me or or, or anything. So, you know, when they're, they're not dead, you know, they're, they're just up in heaven and, you know, yeah. and, and it's right. really import, important for kids to understand death a little bit more because, Um, again, they're going to be seeing the dead ones. They're going to be seeing people on the other side of the veil and, and animals on the other side of the veil. So it's nice. It has that teaching moment in there, um, for animals as well. And I, you know, I think I've pretty much covered quite a bit of it, what it does, um, this book. It is a lot to it. Now it's 168 pages. Uh, which is wow. not your average size of a child. Yeah, the children's books are usually 30 to 50 pages. Right, but this so is it's, kids, it's got so. a lot. Yes. Sorry? Now, how to find, chapter one, how to find your unicorn. Can you talk to us about the significance of the magical unicorn? You know, all my grandkids well, love unicorns, okay? They love them, at least the girl ones. The girls do. Well, okay. So the unicorn came to me. And uh, thank God it's you I'm talking to because (laughs) I wouldn't be able to say that out on the street to just the average person. And uh, so that's why his... (laughs) Yeah. So, um, and I was told his name was Sparkle. And, uh, And that's... That's it. And um, I have two pictures of him, but one of the pictures of him that's very clear with his head um, and the horn and his eye uh, came through the sky in the sky photo. And that's why it's in the back of the book. Right. So um, I have put some of my sky photography, my spirit photography, as I am a spirit photographer. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I put that in the back of the book and he's very clear through the clouds so the face of the unicorn that's drawn by um the illustrator is exactly copied from the face coming through the cloud so he actually has three diamonds on his face 
So the diamond on his nose, yes. the diamond down near his mouth, and the diamond beside his eye are, are there. And that's exactly, exactly traced. And that's the shape of his head and everything um, that's there on the book. It's just traced. That's all it is. Ah. It's not a, um, the illustrator didn't come up with that unicorn. And of course, yeah. Lulu, that's a picture of me when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, so okay. I see. That's, that's, so Ori. That's actually uh, my dress. Ori, Sha- Ori Shaldbald. I don't have to pronounce Shaldbald. it. He's yeah. the, he or she, that's the, okay. The illustrator, great job, yes. by the way. Yes, cool. I and I feel very bad about it because um, the phenomenon that happened to me is that I can sketch people suddenly from the other side of the veil, but yes. I, can't, I can't draw. So I yeah, thought when that, it first that's... happened to me, oh, my God, I can draw. You know, yeah. and now, and I, and then, no, it's nothing's changed. I can't draw. And it's so, I hate that feeling. I want to pick up a pencil or a pen or a crayon or something. Oh. My entire life, I want to be able to draw like other people, and I cannot draw. And it's just so, Eric, it makes me angry. Yeah, maybe Eric can share. Yeah. What's going on there? Oh, well, Eric, what Eric is saying is he says part of that was this, part of your construct in helping you discover your ability to be able to channel. And he also says that part of it is also a block. He says that you're carrying a block there because he says, let's break down how you said it. I've always wanted to draw. I, I'm not able to draw. And he says, uh-uh. um, you can channel. And he says, look at what you've created. Look at what you've been able yeah. to create with channeling. He says, uh-huh. do you think that that really just goes away? He says it's part of the brain that believes that that's not so, that you're not able to. So he says it is a block. Um, he says if you start to um, go into the same space, he says using the same space that you go into when you're channeling, you'll be able to do that. He says it'll take you a little practice because he says it's a different part of your brain that you're using. But wow. He says, cool. yeah, I feel like he says the creative like part of the brain is the same side that we channel. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, but it's almost like I feel like. Oh, heavy. I, I, I feel like it's like, all right, I've, draw, I've made these amazing drawings. That must be a fluke. And, and then it drops out. Mm. It's very strange. And I just. I just did one not long ago for a woman's son because she was just really, you know, it's, I don't have to tell you, Elisa, it's just awful for parents to lose a child. And she Mm. lost her son. And, um, you know, for privacy sake, I'm, I'm allowed to talk about my experience with him, uh, but no names. So um, he was in my house and um, all I knew that because uh, he had, tried to pet my one cat and knocked the cat off the tree. And, and there's no way for the cat to fall down because there's a high ledge. So what happened yeah. was he had startled the cat. And then he actually tried to catch the cat when she was falling. So that was very strange trying to fall asleep one night. And I knew right away someone was in my room because I just knew it. And <laughs> like a mama bear, <laughs> I went screaming and swearing and get out and get away from my cat because I didn't know it was him. Poor guy. Yeah. Anyways, um, oh. and when I was uh, sketching him, he came through very, very, very uh, fast. He was the fastest I had ever done because one of these sketches had taken me seven months. And um, wow. so anyways, he came through. He got it. He was done in less than seven weeks. And um, that was the fastest ever. And he kept telling me he wanted it done for the anniversary, the one year anniversary of his passing right. for his mom. Oh. And, um, and then when I was shading the pencil sideways, a whole bunch of like, just for the background, because there was just right. blank background. And, uh, and um, all these little cartoon characters came up. So I would, you know, I don't ask anything. I don't want to know anything when I, get an order and I right. and people uh, want that want this from me so I don't want to know because I want to first and foremost respect spirit because I don't know how they're feeling about what they want me to know when they were here because it's really none of right. my business 
And, um, and so I say, please don't tell me anything. But when they want to reach out, they do. And they pressure me and they say, you know, like kind of tell my mom that I'm doodling with you. So I said to her, you know, what's going on with the doodling? And she said he was a, he used to doodle. He was an artist. And uh, I said, okay, so some of his art, yeah, some of his art is on here. Um, And then he first had me, the picture, the the cap is backwards. The baseball cap is backwards, clearly. Um, But he had had me draw it. He had me draw it frontwards to the side. And not until the very last minute did I realize, what's wrong with this picture? I'm finished it, but what's wrong with it? I'm like, oh, my God, the cap's on backwards. So she (laughs) said that he often wore the cap that side and um and then he loves cats and uh she still has his cat and there was um oh there was a bunch of through and connect with me and it's just uh, it was the most awesome experience because this guy is so beautiful inside and out he's just so 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 beautiful and um, so he wanted, I'll tell you this, and you're, you're going to get goosebumps. Um, he kept telling me gold, gold, gold. And oh. I knew right away he wanted, he wanted the frame in gold. But at first I was confused because I thought, listen, you've got a silver chain on in this picture here, dude, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm really not right. getting the gold thing. So I let it go, and he was hounding me again about it and hounding me again about it. And I usually wait till about the third time, and then I say, okay, I'm going to ask your mom. So I said to her in a text message, what's up with the gold? What's he on about gold, gold, gold? Just keep saying gold, gold, gold. Anyways, apparently she didn't get it and didn't get it. So he's framed in gold anyways up on her wall, and he's very large, and his eyes are coming through, and she's feeling him. In, in immensely you know and she's right. really it's really helped her and everything's working out fine and all of a sudden I think uh, maybe a month after she had it she said that was the last thing that he expressed to her was gold you are gold to me gold 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 oh wow so do, do, do yeah. you plan on taking new orders for illustrations of loved ones Yes, um, I just, you know, um, I, we all know what it's like to lose someone, and it's, it's so hard, yeah. and some of us handle it better than others, and I'm taking anyone, a first-come, first-served basis, they, you know, they can contact me on the, the website and, and um, through the emails, well, and, your and, you know. On your website, do you have it's examples a de- of people? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Good. They are there. Um, Dsworldprints.com. So it's D-E-S prints. Yeah. Yeah. D-E-E-S prints with an S dot com. Dsworldprints.com. Sorry. We'll have it in the description box, too. We'll have all the yeah. information. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, I do the portrait. Sorry. I do the portrait that I connect with. If you send one, two, three pictures, I get told by them which picture they want, and then I end up connecting with it, and we go from there. And I walk yeah. a very fine, difficult line because I have to make it look like them, right, and look like the portrait. Yeah. At the same time, right. they want a little bit of things changed, and they're telling me change this, change that, but their eyes There's come the through eyes. from the other side of the veil. Yeah, the eyes huh. are different always because they, yes. the eyes are here and now. The yeah. eyes are not from the picture, Yeah, which is right. mind-blowing, uh, and how they come through. So, And I've noticed these pictures, they are happier. They're more peaceful. Mm-hmm. Than the actual portrait when the portrait was taken, and I was blown away by this last one because he picked the blackest, blackest photo. So when you go on the website, you're going to see that his photo is so black, and I'm thinking, how on earth? I've got black eyes. How on earth is anything going to come through? And it's like an it was an outer body experience. I was just gone, wow. and it was done. Yeah, um, and uh, so much color, so many colors in there. 
Oh, so that's how I, I help. Sorry. Yeah. Is there anything else that Go ahead, you Lisa. would like to share? But is there anything else you'd like to share before we take callers? Because we got a lot of them. Um, Oh, okay. Just very quickly, also on my website, okay, so I, I mentioned spirit photography. People that are yes. having a hard time believing in heaven or other yes. realms, you know, go on there and look at the stairs to heaven. Yeah. Because the stairs to heaven are as clear as it gets. That is an untouched picture. I was out walking. I had been by the river. I had been praying. And I walked across the street. I was in front of the supermarket. And I, I just got told, point and click. And I saw nothing. And when I got home, when I sat down and I thought, I'll go through my pictures, I, my mouth just dropped open and I just, I just stared at it. I, just, I couldn't believe it. I, I must have been staring at it five, ten minutes easily. Yeah. Wow. They're, they're real That's stairs cool. to heaven. Untouched, untouched, what, nothing touched at all. So I would just, you know, and energies, as you know, with scalar energy and all that. Uh, sorry, pictures hold energy. Uh, so I just think that every house should have a picture of real stairs to heaven. Um, yes. That positive energy, just mm-hmm. incredible. I don't know. That's that's it. That's it. it yep. <laughs> that's be done. That's awesome. All right. That's oh, awesome. Thank you. All right. The book is beautiful colors. Yeah. Eric, is there anything else you want to share about uh, D.B. Thompson and her work? He just he just says, I love you. He says he's really proud of you. Um, he's Whoa. just commenting how um, like this is a real journey in the making. And he's commending you for how hard you've worked. And so he's just letting everybody yes. know. Um, and yes, and he says, you know, um, everyone listening has an idea or has something in their heart that they really want to do. And he says, really listen to Dee's story and know that she really had this in her heart. And this is something that she yes. put a, a lot of um, will and a lot of trust into. And he says, right. and it's really amazing. And so he's just reminding That's all true. of you that there's always something that each one of us have in our heart that, that, you know, we may think is not possible or we may not know how it's going to work out. But he says um, he hopes that this, this gives you all some inspiration. And, um, and D, and he's just real proud. He's just saying um, congratulations. He thinks that it's great, and he's really happy to see another book out there for kids or something that um, parents and kids can have because Eric's real passionate about kids. He has always yes, been. And yes, and I, I, I thank him so much and tell him I just love him so much. He knows how much I love him. It's just mm-hmm. there are no human words. There are no words. And, mm-hmm. and thank you so much, and thanks for taking over. <laughs> No, but he actually he actually took me by the hand. I I say it in the beginning of the book. He took me by the hand. Oh, yeah, I saw that too. It's beautiful. All right, we got somebody from the four one two area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hi, uh, how are you, Elisa? Uh, Hi, how are you? Um, Yeah, not good, but um, I'm already from Presto. I lost my son Jacob in May, and um, right, <laughs> oh, yeah. hard time. I miss him so much. And um, first and foremost, I find myself asking over and over, why, why, why? And Jacob was kind. He was funny. He was smart and handsome. And so many people loved him. And he suffered so terribly with this leukemia, and then eventually died. And I, is there a reason why? Yes, and that's had to go very that. important to know. Why, Eric, or Jacob, if you want to, you know, add something. Why okay. you have to die? All right, hang on, hang on here. Hang on here. Jacob, <laughs> last initial N. Yes. Well, okay. Um, Jacob is here with Eric. Um, okay. 
He's it, the very first thing he's doing is he's reaching his hand out to you, like just to hold your hand, and he, he's just letting you know, like, Mom, I'm here. I'm supposed to them here, and he wants to talk about touching your face, about the little feelings you're feeling on your face, because he wants to let you know that he's touching your face. So he says it's not a hair, it's it's like not anything like that. It's me, and he's touching you. Um, okay. What he's saying is that um, the the lifetimes that we have here, and, and this is something that he wants you to understand that he's explaining from that spiritual purpose because he said, Mom, there's nothing that I can tell you from the human part of me, the human part of you, that is really going to make sense to your heart, that's mm. really going to explain why I'm gone. And, and he wants mm. to let you know that it's, okay it's okay that you feel that because but it's not okay for us it's no it's not and that, that's what he's saying he's he's not trying to give a reason yeah. and to make you be okay with it right now because okay. it's not about that and and he says that part of what you feel is you, you're looking for that reason and so he says, I don't want to give you an answer as to this is why it's happening and that that's going to make it okay. But what he is going to tell you is that his life here, he says, you're right, Mom, my life here on earth wasn't easy. Um, yeah. He said that he's talking about um, having a lot of gratitude for his life because he says, even yeah. though my life was cut short, um, humanly oh. cut short, there was a lot of gifts that he had, and he's talking about yes. his family, his relationships, and all the things. He says people, like people, yes. the connections, the things that he had, and he says that means the most to him. And he says, my life was cut short as a human being, but he says, as my soul, he says my life was rich. My life was rich. And he also talks about his parents. He talks about you guys, his family. Yeah. Not all, not all kids come into this world with parents like you. Not all kids oh. come into this world to that's experience best. that kind of love. And yeah. so he wants to let you know that that was chose. He he chose that. He chose you to be his parents. He chose okay, you to go yeah. through this. This was an experience that was part of, he says, his cycle, part of his cycle. And he says, um, although he feels happiness, like relief right now, he knows that you don't. And he says, you know, like his mom, uh, I'm not telling you to be okay with it. What I'm telling you is to trust that you're going to feel better. Okay. trust that you're going to feel better. I I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to say one oh, thing. Um, um, it's his dad's birthday today, and he's here. So I was oh. wanted to get a message for his father today on his birthday. Okay, hang on a second here. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, this is uh, Jacob's dad. Uh, just wondering if he hey, has a message for me. He says, hi, Dad. He says, hi, Dad. Um, he thinks you're real courageous. He says you have a lot of courage. And he shows you as being like a knight, like having a lot of courage. Um, Jacob, Jacob is very, um, he's very tangible with like animals, like coming in animals. So did you see something today or right before today? Did you have a bird or something like a small animal come across your path? Well, yeah, I've seen some uh, some like a little bunny or uh, rabbits around the comedy yeah, animals around, around uh, you know on my way to work. This wild one. Okay, well, what he's saying is that um, like he's not that animal. He's not saying that, but he's talking about um, having courage and new beginnings. And him showing himself to you with animals, like with nature. And so he's telling you to keep your eyes open for that because he walks with okay. you. And the other thing is, too, um, do you drive a truck? A no. Truck? 
No. He, he's showing himself sitting in a pickup truck. Does somebody oh. have a pickup truck? Or does he want one or something? No. No, but I always wanted to get one. <laughs> okay. Well, he's showing himself sitting in a pickup truck, and he's got a very big old smile. Like, he's real happy. So I don't think he's thinking, if you're going to get one, he's going to be riding with you or something. But he keeps okay. telling you to have courage, and he's showing me this pickup truck. So keep that in mind as we go forward in the next few days, because Jacob is showing himself in everything to you. And it is real hard right now. It's hard to see all that stuff because it hurts so much. But he wants to yeah, let you course. know. He says, keep, keep looking for me. Keep looking for me in everything. I, and there's something real yeah. significant about that truck, because he wants to tell you that on your birthday. So there's something significant oh. there. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, 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 no, no, no I, I, get, I, I have one more I have what? Thank you. I have one more question. Does he see? Does well, Jacob I mean, see my we, parents? We have, we have okay, but we have so many oh, callers. I, I, oh, I I'm sorry. That's okay. No, That's no. Okay, I'll just call back next week. All right. Thank you. Happy birthday. Oh, I always hate to cut people off, but we have like fifty know. plus. Uh, it's it's really hard, especially when somebody's grieving. So I feel so bad. I know. I know. I know. All right. it's I got awful. The, yeah. Yeah. Got somebody from the two six two area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hi. Hi. My name's Michelle. I was wondering if Eric could tell me what am I? Am I? Am I an Earth angel or? What's what your am last I? Uh, name? And uh, where are you D. calling from? Wisconsin. Michelle D. Yep. And from where? Wisconsin. 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 All right. And, um, Michelle, what what Eric says is actually he says you're um, he says yes you are an Earth angel but he's calling you a celestial. Um, but he says you're uh, Earth angel and star seed. Okay. You're, you're a little wow. bit about. Okay. Um, he says it, 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 a lot of it has very similar things, but he says you do have origins on other planets. Um, the Palladius being one that really stands out. But he says the, the loneliness that you feel at times, yeah. the, just that segregation, he says that's actually more of your starseed nature okay. than, than the earth angel, but, but you do have both within you. Um, are you searching for your purpose right now, he says? Yes. If you're, like, looking for what your purpose is, because he says, like, hold on, keep going. He wants to he wants to let you know like you're gonna get more information and more is gonna come to you. So he says persevere, keep going forward, keep okay. going forward because there's gonna be more answers come to you. He says you're meant to be here. He goes I know you don't have all the pieces fitting together right now, but he says keep going because it's coming to you. Okay, That's very great. Special. Yes, thank you. Special. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Thank oh, you. you're welcome. Yeah. Take care. That, that's pretty cool. Earth Angel and Star Seeds and Fleeing to Boot. That's awesome. All right, guys, I think we need to close mm-hmm. it up because we have enough uh, time to take another caller. I'm so sorry. And we're, uh, I'm going to be out of town next Tuesday, so we'll not, we will not have a, a radio show next Tuesday, but then we're going to be good. You guys check out GP Thompson. We'll put her. Um, the website in the description box. And, of course, Michelle Gray at thehealinghh-art.com. I love you guys all. And thank you, DP, for being such an awesome guest. And, of course, Michelle, thank yes, you thank so you. much. For what you did. Thank, and I thank love you Eric. so much. Thank, thank you for Eric having me. Love you. Eric, love Lots you of love to you. Love Many you blessings. Too. Love yeah. you both. Love you, everybody. Love you, Eric. I love you. Good night. Love you. Love you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.